Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrylic Asylum. I'm Mike Ferris. In this video, I'll be going through this very easy Halloween pumpkin painting each step of the way, so stay tuned to the end so you don't miss a thing. And don't forget to check out the description box below for a list of colors and materials. So getting started now, I have two papers taped together. Each paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. And on the back, I've got painter's tape and I've got them taped seam to seam. And then I've got this cut to my canvas size, which is an 11 by 14 inch pre-stretched canvas. And I've got one inch squares laid out like a grid, as you can see here. And I've got it numbered vertically and horizontally just so I can lay out the basic proportionate shapes of this pumpkin piece. And so on the back side, I've used some wax transfer paper and a stylus. And I did put a short video link in the description box if you need more information on how to transfer images to your canvas. So check that out if you need some info on that. Okay, so I didn't finish tracing out that upper right spider as you can see because it's just gonna get covered up by the background. So I'll just come back in there later with that. So now getting started on my palette, I'm gonna take my number 20 flat brush and I got phthalo blue, permanent black, and as always titanium white. So I'm gonna take this blue, a little touch of this black to it and some titanium white. So with this nighttime blue color here, I'm just going to start and fill in the sky with that. Okay, so without cleaning now, I'm just going to pick up some titanium white and let's make a little bit of a moonlight glow here. And I want this sort of foggy, misty night here with some moonlight showing through. So with that, I'll just go ahead and apply that here. And I'll just take it out and apply less pressure on my brush as I go into that darker values on each side. And this will blend it in and give it that nice foggy, misty look. Okay, no cleaning yet. And I'm going to take some permanent black and some blue now and no titanium white this time. And I wanna make this vignette look and have some trees out here. So I'm just gonna scratch this down here like so and just sort of run that up. And then as I get outside, I wanna take just the tip of my brush, the corner of it, as you can see, and I'll just tap it out like so. And this makes the indication of some distant trees in the fog. Okay, so now some titanium white into that same value. And with this, let's make some tree branches. So now I've got my number four of a natural bristle round brush and this is gonna really help to make some indications of some leaves on the tree. So I'm gonna tap it on my palette as you can see like so. And it's in that same value. And as you can see those bristles, they're all frayed out like this. And so when I tap that into the color and then tap it onto my canvas, you can see how this is gonna create some leaves and some foliage going on here. So just like that and we'll get the indication of that going on. Okay, going back to my number 20 flat brush now, and with that black and blue, let's take this dark value now and drag it down and sort of blend it up into that foliage up above. Okay, 
Okay, with a clean brush now, still my number 20 flat brush, I'm taking some permanent black now and some of this cad orange together. And this is gonna create a very dark brown. And with this color, I'm just gonna block in for the pumpkin and go around all the different cutouts. So just taking my hair dryer now on medium heat and I want to apply a second coat and I do want this dry before that otherwise I'll just be cutting through the paint and it will lose its vibrance and volume that I want to build on top of that so drying is definitely a must. So now going back in again same thing and this is just the blocking stages which means that I'm just putting the basic color for the most part that's in each area and then of course on top of those colors we'll put different values and we'll make all the different changes and bring all the dimension and texture out and build this up. Okay and with a clean brush still my number 20 flat I'm taking this orange now and just a teeny bit of this phthalo blue which is complementary to orange and as you can see when you mix that in a little bit it dulls that orange down. So again just the blocking stages getting that basic color where it goes and that's going to be on the outsides of some of the eyes and in the nose as well as some of the mouth. Okay, so now I've got a number 10 flat brush now and on my palette I've got cad yellow and primary red. Now we're gonna apply these values. So I'm gonna take some of this yellow now, just a teeny bit of this orange to it. I want this orangey yellow color and a little bit of titanium white to bring it up a bit. And let's apply this value now within the same areas. Okay, and then I'm going back to that dull orange color again. And right here, sort of lost that, but this is what's cool about acrylics. So you can just apply that right over, and voila, anything you want to do with these colors at any time. Okay, no cleaning yet, some more yellow now, and that orange color now, let's apply that. Now I want to get a lot of this yellow now, and put it over there, just a little bit of white into that. I want this light orange, or I'm sorry, light yellow color. <laughs> And let's fill in the rest of the eyes and nose and mouth with this. Okay, and again, let's do a little quick hair dry on medium heat so that we can apply more layers and not have the other ones that are still wet interfering and mixing in because if you do that, then of course those colors that mix will just become one dull color 
and then there won't be no changes and there won't be no values that are playing together showing texture dimension that'll all get lost so definitely want to dry and apply more stuff on top so now let's get some of this red let's get a little orange into that i want this fiery orangey red color on the very outsides and let's put those in now Okay, now taking my number six flat brush now, and I'm taking some orange, a little red, some white. And so with this value now, let's go ahead and play this in just here and there. I wanna dance that in. And just these little things to start off with, this is just gonna show some texture and a little bit of the flesh differences going on within the pumpkin and just how it's been cut and all these little things that are happening. Okay, and now it's getting some cad yellow a little bit of orange into that and a little titanium white to bring that up a bit so now with this lighter value again i want to go in and i just want to dance that around here and there using just the corner of the brush so again showing these little things happening a little light zinging off of this splash of the pumpkin here and there and just bringing this realism out Okay, and now some cad orange and cad yellow together. And this time no titanium white into it. I wanna take just this little slight variation of value now. And I wanna cover up again a little bit of this. And I wanna leave just a little bit of that other value showing. I don't wanna cover everything up because again, values need to play together and they need to be showing together. And let's go back to that dull orange color, a little touch of that phthalo blue into it to dull it down. And with this value, let's dance that in here and there, but not everywhere. that same dull orange value now let's take and run a little line right here just a little bit of a separator and shows a little bit of shadow play on the pumpkin flesh okay some more red and some more orange and with this fiery color again let's go into the mouth and let's rediscover this color that got covered up a little bit some of that dull orange color again and this time some titanium white and let's warm it up a little bit with some yellow this time just a little slight variation in value change and again let's apply that here and there Okay, and then I'm 
taking some white now, a little bit of yellow to that. And I want this even brighter light yellow color and I want to put it in the center first where I want it the brightest. And I don't want to cover up all that yellow that I put down because that's going to serve our glow and make this ever more brighter. So just going to sort of dust it out a little bit and let's do that on all the parts. So now I'm going to take some of this orange, a little bit of white to that. I want it pretty light, a little bit of yellow to warm that up. And what I want to do now is create the glow effect down on the mouth where the light's going to be zinging through. back to some red and some orange there and getting that fiery red color and again I want to reapply that. Okay, so layer upon layer, and again a quick dry on medium heat to preserve our other colors so they don't blend together. And this again builds more texture and dimension on top of everything. So now taking titanium white, a little bit of that cad yellow now, and again let's go back in here, and this is my number two flat brush now for more details, and I just want to dance that here and there. So as you can see all this nice texture and dimension that we've built up using all these different values and of course letting them dry in between each layer and so this creates all that very nicely. So now taking cad yellow and some white and let's go and reinforce these glowing effects that are coming out of the mouth lighting everything up. So with that color left on my brush now, as you can see, I just want to drag it out and sort of dust it out like so. And this is going to show some light zinging out, making this look even brighter. And let's take that light ray effect up here as well, just a little bit. Okay, let's go back into some cad yellow and some white for that light yellow color and I want to go in the mouth now and redefine some of what got covered up. So again, you don't have to worry about being perfect and staying in your lines all the time because as you can see, you can just go right back in and of course another layer always means more dimension, more volume and just makes it look more fuller. So that's a really good thing. So 
do your thing, come back in, rediscover, put another layer down and bring it back out again, no problem. Okay, now taking some phthalo blue now and some titanium white to that. Let's go on top of the pumpkin here and create some highlights that the moonlight is hitting as well as showing some of the texture of the pumpkin and also some of the 3D effect that's going on. So no cleaning necessary and again more titanium white and I want the very top of the pumpkin to have the brightest highlights and as it fades down into that darker blue stuff it's going to show even more dramatic effect and a lot more three dimensional effect happening. and just taking permanent black now and I want to go and just deepen and darken the stem. Now I'm going to my script liner brush now with some titanium white and some cat orange to make this really bright and it's important to put a lot of water on a script liner brush because if not it'll be very frustrating and it's just one of the rules about a script liner brush that you want to follow so with that, I'm just going to dance this stuff in here and there, as you can see, just these little fine little details of zing and light across the pumpkin flesh. And now back to my number two flat brush, I'm just going to take pure titanium white, putting it in the brightest spot first, and then I want to dust it out lightly into that yellow that's already there. And again, I don't want to cover all that yellow up because as you know, it will destroy the glow going on. So let's do that in the other eye and nose and mouth. Okay, and no cleaning, I'm just gonna pick up just a teeny bit of this yellow now. And let's go back in and reinforce these glowing zing and light rays that are coming out of the mouth. And so I don't want this pure titanium white because that stuff that is already pure titanium white coming out of the brightest spot, it won't show any difference that way and then I'll lose the glow and it'll just look like this light color that was just sort of scratched in. And without the changes, it's just gonna kind of look weird like some really bright color suddenly got thrown in there instead of light coming out that's showing this fading glow going on. Okay, with a clean brush now, I'm taking my number two flat brush now with permanent black. Let's do the spider now. 
So with this number two flat, it's very small. I can get into small spaces and it is important with a dark color like this when you're going on top of light colors to stay within the lines because even though I said before you can push colors back, if you go outside your lines with this, it's gonna take a while to cover up that dark color with more of that light that you went outside with. So I would be very careful. It can be done, but it'll be very time consuming and kind of a pain. So I wanna be careful with that. So just now with the edge of the brush now, I just wanna make these very nice, very thin lines for the legs. If you push too hard, then you're gonna have a lot thicker line and you're gonna, it's not gonna really look all that well. You'll have this really fat leg looking thing instead of these nice skinny little arms. Okay, so with some more permanent black and again that number two flat brush, I'm going to go and start down with this spider web that's coming down. And I thought instead of tracing this out again, I'm just going to freehand it because it's kind of like this light bulb shape. Very simple. So I just decided to go for it and I want to make these spiders about the same size because they are the same type of spider. So I'm just going to go down and make the basic shape and just fill it in. with a clean brush now still my number two and some titanium white I just want to hit just a little highlight here and there and of course I don't want to cover up that black but I just want to have just a little bit of this white showing I'll go up the spider web like so as well and I'll even take it down in front of the spider so I'm just gonna hit the legs and I'll do the one inside the eye as well with this So as I go down the highlights, notice the line gets a little broken there. You want that because that shows a little bit of more detail and some texture on the spider arms. Okay, with a clean brush now, I'm going into this red and just a touch of black to that to dull it down. And just here and there on the spider, I wanna create just a little bit of color on there. And on this spider as well, let's put a few dots on him. And you can omit this step, it doesn't have to be anything but black if you don't want it to have any color, that's fine. So a little bit of permanent black now, I wanna knock some of that back a bit. Okay, now going back to my number six flat brush now, I got some titanium white. And I just wanna brighten up the very tops of these highlights. I felt like they got a little bit lost. And again, I wanna make this top brighter than the rest of them coming down. Okay, let's do something really cool. Let's take some white now and a little bit of this cad orange and just a little bit of cad yellow and just barely any paint on the brush. And with that, no water, I wanna dry brush this on and scratch this light ray that's zinging out of his left eye here. 
and I'm even going to go over the spider a little bit and show the spider playing into that glow light a little bit and this will really bring out the dramatic effect of this brightness going on. Okay guys, so with my titanium white and script liner brush, lots of water, let's go ahead and sign right here. And I want to thank you all so much for joining. And if you found this lesson inspirational and enjoyable, then do subscribe so you don't miss any video lessons I'll be putting out on a weekly basis. And share with your friends and family if you think this one is something that they'd enjoy. And give this one a shot. This is super easy, not much to it at all. We're talking a few colors, a few layers, and go for it. I'm telling you, it'll be a success. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And until next time, happy Halloween and happy painting, everyone. Thank you.